Hi, now we are going to talk about phrases. A phrase is a group of words that does not have both a subject and a predicate. If a group of words has both a subject and a predicate, it's called a clause, or possibly it could be a sentence, but we're talking about phrases this time. Uh, for example, a verb phrase consists of a verb, the main verb, plus any helping verbs that might go with it. For example, will be going. Will be going can work together as a verb phrase. It, ex it expresses the, um, the future progressive tense. Yeah. Um, so now I want to talk about prepositional phrases. Prepositional phrases are, for some reason, um, often not understood. Um, it's kind of an odd thing to try to explain. A preposition is a word that connects a noun, its object, with some other word in a sentence. Um, the phrase, the prepositional phrase, um, describes or modifies a word. It can act as an adjective, modifying a noun, or it can act as an adverb, modifying an, a verb, another adverb, or um, an adjective. Here we go. Um, it shows the relationship of the noun in the phrase, the object, to another word in the sentence. For example, I can do it without any help. That noun, the word help, is the object of the preposition, and we're connecting that word to the verb do with the word without. The word without is your preposition, the word any is a modifier, um, and so the prepositional phrase is without any help. The word without any help is acting as an adverb saying how something can be done, okay? So we're modifying this verb phrase here, can do. Um, yeah, or a prepositional phrase can act as an adjective, connecting that, um, showing the relationship between its object and a noun in the sentence. For example, the bag on the sofa is mine. The sofa uh, is being connected with the word bag and the word on shows the relationship between the position, preposition, between the position of the bag and the position of the sofa. If I said the bag under the sofa is mine, then maybe it's the same bag and the same sofa, but the position of the two nouns in relationship to one another would be different. Okay, so hopefully that helps you understand prepositions and prepositional phrases. In English, um, actually in every language, prepositions can be the hardest things to learn because uh, the ways of thinking about them are different. Um, and also, like for example, in Spanish you have one word, en, which is going to be used here, uh, la bolsa en la sofa. Um, but in English, we have the word in, on, and the word at that could all be translated as en in Spanish. And so you have to learn those things. Um, in English, we have a word for, uh, preposition for, but the preposition for can be translated um, at, in at least two different ways in Spanish, um, para y por, depending on what you're talking about. So when you go from one language to another, it can be kind of hard to um, learn the prepositions and learn what the position is we're talking about. Just a little um, note here, specifically about in, on, and at. In, on, and at can be talking about places, like here. It's talking about where the uh, bag is. Um, or it can be talking about time. When we're talking about um, a place, the word in has to do with something being contained, okay? Uh, like the, my juice is in that green cup. 
So it's the juice is contained in the cup. The word on has to do with contact between surfaces. So is there something on my face? So like there's a contact between surfaces. It's not contained in my face. Or I could say there's a sticker on my green cup. There's contact between the surface of the sticker and the surface of the cup. But it's you can we can understand that the sticker is not inside the cup. It's not contained in the cup. It's just contacting the cup. Um, and at has to do with um, something that's near something else, but not exactly contacting it and not exactly contained in it. So um, Carlos is at his locker. Carlos is not in his locker because that would mean that he is contained within inside the locker. And most Carloses that I know and most lockers that I know, that wouldn't work. And... Um, on would mean that he is on top of the sofa. I mean, on top of the sofa. On top of the locker. Okay. Um, and But at means that he is nearby it. He's positioned maybe in front of it, you could say. Um, so, see what I mean? We have to really learn these words and the differences between them. Uh, going on to the next kind of phrase, participial phrase. A participial phrase consists of a verb plus any object or complement, like a direct object, like a uh, subject complement, or any modifiers like adjectives or articles. Um, and we, I hope, I think we've talked about those before. We're talk, kind of going into something a little bit more advanced now. It's used as an adjective, the participial phrase, like this. Or, uh, yeah, it's always used as an adjective, not ever as an adverb. Feeling confident, he turned in his work. So this phrase, feeling confident, is a participial phrase, meaning that it is a verb, uh, a verb, and in this case, a complement, that's being used to describe a noun. This pronoun, actually, the word he. Feeling confident describes this person. Uh, feeling is your verb. Confident is the verb comp complement. Um, in this case, the predicate nominative of the verb feeling. Um, over here, the perfectly made bed looked inviting. Okay, so perfectly made is a participial phrase that's being used to describe the bed. Um, perfectly is a modifier that modifies the verb made and made is a verb but it's being used as an adjective so when you use a verb as an adjective it's a participle and when you put it with other words then it's a participial phrase um, let's see the verb that's used to describe may be in the present participle form or the past participle form the present participle form is the same as the present progressive form of a verb. It ends, excuse me, in ing. The man answering the telephone is the CEO. So we have a phrase with the verb answer, uh, answering the telephone. Telephone is the object of the verb answering. And the whole phrase, answering the telephone, tells me which man I'm talking about. So it's used as an adjective to describe or modify the word man. Okay, here we have past participle form. Fully baked, the pizza was ready to eat. So here we have a participial phrase, fully baked, that consists of the verb in the past participle form and a modifier, in this case an adverb, modifying the verb baked. Uh, and this whole little phrase here is being used to describe the pizza. As you can see when you're looking through here, there are different positions that these phrases can be in. They can come as an introductory phrase, like with feeling confident here and fully baked here. They can come really in the same position as any other adjective, like this, the perfectly made bed. 
or sometimes they can come after the noun, and like in this case, the man answering the telephone. So, uh, if it's a present participle verb, um, it will not come right before the the noun. I don't think. Let's see. Yeah, you wouldn't say the the answering the telephone man. Um, so, and if it is a past participle verb, then it normally wouldn't come like after the noun like this one. In other words, you wouldn't normally say the bed perfectly made looked inviting. You could, but it would be unusual. Uh, the past participle form of an irregular verb does not end in ed. For example, the story hastily written by a child actually got first prize. So in this case, we have the participial phrase hastily written by a child. It has a modifier, this adverb here, and it also has a prepositional phrase within it as a modifier of the verb written. Okay, so this whole thing is used to describe the story. Um, so the story hastily written by a child actually got first prize. Tell us which story we're talking about. Not the one that was laboriously written by a 14 year old, but the story that was hastily written by a child. Um, so you will see in your book many different examples of these things, of these kinds of phrases, and you will have to write sentences with these kinds of phrases. Make sure and follow all of the directions that you are given and you should do fine. If you have any questions about this, please let me know, but happy writing.